The 138th pick is in for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's defensive end Sharif Miller out of Penn State. Welcome back to Eagles Draft Central presented by Dietz and Watson. Fran, another Penn State kid for yep. the Eagles. They have four new Eagles out of their draft picks. 50% Penn State hitting right now. What do you think about this defensive end, though? The first defensive player we've seen the Eagles select in this draft. You know, kind of similar to uh, to the running back they selected in the second round. I think you have a guy who's very well-rounded, very strong, uses his hands very well. He wins with the bull rush. So I'm excited to hear uh, from Dave Spadaro, from Howie Roseman, uh, and Joe Douglas a little bit later to hear what they like so much about Sharif Miller, a local kid from Philadelphia, graduated from George Washington High School, was at Frankfurt High School in Northeast Philadelphia before that. So a local guy, went to Penn State, was productive there, now on his way to the NFL. Yeah, a lot to be excited about. Another Penn State product, a Philadelphia native. Uh, he must be so excited that he is not going to have to relocate yep. uh, to at the next level because I know these guys never know exactly where they're going to be going. Um, so for more on what the experience was like inside the Eagles draft room, we are going to Eagles insider Dave Spadaro, who is in the room where it happened as always. Dave, break it down for us. What was the scene when this pick was made? Well, it was an interesting scene. Um, packed room, of course. Uh, Staff Sergeant Alexander Pedino in the room, uh, watching, observing everything on this Saturday. And the Eagles bringing in Jim Schwartz to say hello, bringing in Philip Daniels to say hello. It was funny. Schwartz said to Sharif, hey, Sharif, are you in Philadelphia? Get in a lift and get over here to the Novacare complex. And obviously for Philip Daniels, the new defensive line coach, another piece to work with. We had wondered where would the Eagles kind of tap in to this defensive line talent in this draft, which is said to be historically deep in the interior and on the edges. So they do it here at the end of the fourth round. Sharif Miller, who, when he came to the Novacare Complex and talked to the Eagles, you know, talked about, hey, I need to play better in all situations against every level of competition. Uh, get that motor going. But he's enormously talented. Phillip wants physical players on the edge, violent, disruptive players. And the Eagles believe that Sharif Miller fits that mold, and he'll come in and compete. Remember, it's not just about Brandon Graham and Derek Barnett and Chris Long. You know, there's also uh, Josh Sweat here. There, there is some talent here for the Philadelphia Eagles, and Miller will compete with that group in training camp. Yeah, and the Eagles bring back Vinnie Curry as well from uh, from the Tampa Bay Bucks. And ironically, Dave, he's a guy. He kind of reminds me of Vinnie Curry in terms of his style. Yeah. He's a bigger guy. He's got the ability to set a strong edge. What do you think about adding another defensive end into this group? We know how much the Eagles love to value the lines on both sides. It's been offense all through the, up to this point. Now you get your first defensive player. Not not a really surprise that it's a defensive lineman. I mean, there's two things here, Fran. Look, the, we, we kind of thought going in, maybe given the nature of this draft, it would be a defense-oriented draft. Had not been the case until now. And then number two, Howie Roseman, other than that first round, he's let the draft come to him. He spoke about it last night. Uh, let it happen again here in the fourth round rather than dealing out of the fourth round and picking up additional selections in rounds five, six, and seven. Uh, the Eagles wanted to stay true to their board. They stay true to their board. And they bring in another piece to work with. And again, you cannot have enough defensive line help. We found that out last year when the Eagles suffered a rash of injuries and really toward the end of the season relied heavily on a three-man rotation at the defensive end position. So they want to build depth. They want to build competition. And when you look at it, guys, I mean, the Eagles – They've got exactly that. They are going to have to work through a lot of talent here to find the best four or five, maybe six defensive ends to make this 53-man roster. It's going to be great competition in training camp and in the preseason. Yeah, certainly a good problem for any team to have, yeah. and of course for Jim Schwartz to have as well. Did you get a sense from him how excited he was about this pick? I know we talked yesterday about Deuce Daly and the Miles Sanders pick from Penn State. How excited was Jim Schwartz to have this guy in the fold? Yeah, very excited, Amy. And here's the thing about Jim, and Jim's talked about this in the past. What works for Jim Schwartz and his defense? Well, it begins with a dominating front. And the Eagles in 2017 obviously had a dominating front. And the way that they've addressed the defensive line in the offseason, you know, signing Malik Jackson in free agency, bringing back Vinnie Curry, retaining Brandon Graham, now adding Sharif Miller. I mean, it's a, it's a deep, it's a talented group. Uh, 
Um, I think the Eagles' idea here, as we know, is to just keep rotating through, moving players in and out, up and down the line, getting that uh, jet set group ready to go in the nickel, sliding players inside. Uh, so I think Sharif Miller, while probably not known as a dynamic pass rusher, very physical against the run, and certainly show the Eagles that he's got enough getting up the field, attacking. That's what Jim Schwartz wants his defensive lineman to do. Well, and a guy who's not going to have to get on a plane to arrive at the NovaCare complex, like you mentioned. Um, Dave, I'm curious mm -hmm. what the energy is like in the draft room today. You, you've talked to us throughout the process of the different kinds of vibes throughout the different picks. And day three, I know, is a day that Howie Roseman always loves and has mentioned it's his favorite of the days. What is the vibe in that room right now? You know, Amy, this is really where you find out a lot about your scouting department, your personnel staff. You want to find these mid to late round and then after the draft gems. And with only two picks, it's kind of an exercise in patience. And I know that Howie's constantly working the telephones, evaluating opportunities to move up, to move out obviously decided to stay put here in the fourth round. But the Eagles have to keep their eyes open here for opportunities to get in to round number five, potentially, which it would appear to be a long shot at this point. Potentially in the sixth round, do you want to move around in that round? Do you want to try to get into the seventh round? But also kind of starting to lay the groundwork significantly for a crucial after the draft process. With only five draft picks here, the Eagles are going to have a lot of room and a lot of opportunities for some of the higher end players who weren't drafted. So contacting agents and getting a feel for the landscape and explaining to them that, look, we've only got five draft picks. If your player wants to have a fair chance, and we've shown in the past that undrafted players will make this roster, then the Philadelphia Eagles are a good spot for you. So all of those things are going on along with the realization that it's a very long day here on Saturday. The Eagles don't have a lot of picks, only two of them coming into the day, only one remaining. As exhilarating as it is to kind of race to the finish and go through that frenzy of signing players after the draft, you've also got to kind of measure it and stay calm and be patient and understand that there's a long way to go in the draft. The Eagles just without that draft capital to use right now. Dave, the last question I've got for you is just about the – you mentioned him, the new defensive line coach, Philip Daniels. He's been here as the, uh, the assistant defensive line coach over the last couple of years. Tell us what, what, what can Eagles fans expect from uh, Philip Daniels. You talked about how, what he wants. He wants violent, urgent players off the edge. What can they expect from the new defensive line coach? I think a little bit uh, more discipline. I mean, the Eagles had a couple of busts last year along the defensive line. That Adrian Peterson run is a prime example when the Redskins came to Lincoln Financial Field, a bust up front and a long touchdown run for Peterson. He wants that violence. He wants that aggressiveness. He wants, I think, a little bit more technique use, hand use. Uh, I, I seem to think there's going to be some versatility that the Eagles are going to have to show up front here. Um, but look, it's all about production. I mean, as as critical as I am right there about the Eagles defensive line, let's remember they had an excellent season getting to the quarterback last year. Where they fell off, and I'm not sure if it's the defensive line or the linebackers or just the way the games went, the run-stopping efforts went down last year. And, and so getting Tim Jernigan back really helps in the interior and solved one of the Eagles' holes. So they've got really good depth along the defensive tackle in that rotation with Fletcher Cox, with Jernigan, with Malik Jackson, with, with Trayvon Hester, potentially uh, Bruce Hector. I mean, players who are going to compete for playing time. And now you've got some really good, promising depth on the edge. I think Phillip is going to Get all his guys out there and may the best 8, 9, 10 players win roster spots here. It should be intense competition in training camp. But I think Phillip wants it to be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more physical, and a little bit more uh, kind of technique-oriented along this defensive line. Dave Spadaro with the inside info from our Eagles insider from inside the draft room, living up to the name. Dave, uh, we have a long day ahead. We will let you go for now, but I'm sure we'll be checking in with you later today. All right, guys. Um, I always love hearing what it's like in the room yes. the moment that these picks are made and just getting a sense of the energy and all of the logistics that goes into these moments. You know, we watch these these big moments uh, in these broadcasts, but there is so much that goes into it behind the scenes. And it sounds like, again, the Eagles very excited about the pick. It feels like they think they are winning the, the draft. Yeah, this is a guy that they've had some, uh, some time to be around. Okay, so Sharif Miller, a local guy, was here for the local pro day last week. So they 
they've been around him. He was in the building for oh, quite a while. So you're talking about a player that they're very familiar with and comfortable with. But let's talk about him as a prospect yeah. real quick because I think when you look at Sharif Miller, his game is based off speed and power. His primary pass rush move is the bull rush, and he does a great job of working inside the pads of the opposing offensive lineman and driving him backward. He has a couple other moves that he'll work in, and that's something that he has to continue to expand upon going to the next level. But when you look at him, he's, that's his base. He wants to work as a bull rusher. He does a nice job of what I call, Amy, pounding the drum. He's going to pump those arms right when he comes out of his stance, keep the offensive lineman on his toes, doesn't exactly know what he's going to do with his hands, and then he explodes into the, into the opponent, driving him backward into his chest. And he does a really good job with that, selling speed to power. He does a really good job in that area. So when you look at a Sharif Miller, that's how he wins. He is an inside rusher, likes the ability to get inside the opponent's pads and drive him back. Well, I know uh, a lot of Penn State fans who are also Eagles fans, and we have several that work in this building that's as right. well. So yeah. I know a lot of people are very excited about two Penn State guys here joining the Eagles moving forward. And uh, I think a lot of people and fans have been tweeting, players have been tweeting their excitement to welcome these new uh, draft picks. I think we have a couple. Yeah, here we go. Oh, look at this. Last time the Eagles took two Penn State players in the same draft was 40 years ago, Fran. We are making history here on Eagles Draft Central. Uh, that's a very fun fact. Are you surprised by that? Uh, not that surprised. It's, uh, it is an interesting fact, though. To get two guys from one school, I suppose. All yes. right. Sharif Miller is a Philly native who went to George Washington High School and Penn State. Yes, we yeah. uh, touched on that. He has to be, this kid has to be living his dream right now. Can you imagine growing up in Philadelphia, dreaming of playing in the NFL, and then today, uh, this is your team out of all the places. Your mom can just come to your games. I, I can't imagine it because I, that, I was that guy, and now obviously <laughs> I didn't go on to play for the Eagles, but uh, it's definitely a lot of fun would you see a guy like that and it almost brings me back again and we've talked about him a little bit brings me back to Vinnie Curry he grew up a yeah. huge fan of the team in South Jersey uh, grows up goes to Marshall and then gets drafted in the second round Sharif Miller a little bit of a different path going late in the fourth round but very similar story in terms of a guy who grows up as a pass rusher wants to play for his favorite team gets drafted and now gets to live out his dream it's going to be a lot of fun when we get to speak to him we'll see if he uh if he does take that car over here today maybe we'll uh, meet with the reporters later on today yeah but. we might get to see him pretty quick uh so dave mentioned it a little bit earlier and of course something we've talked about but all of the competition that is going to be in that defensive line room now you talk about a new d-line coach and of course jim schwartz who loves to have tons of weapons loves to be aggressive on that defensive front how do you like the addition of sharif to this group yeah i think when you look at him he's got that size that you want off yeah. the Edge, right because you know everyone talks about the wide nine and what they like uh, off the edge those big bodies when you line them up a little bit further outside that helps you in terms of you got all that momentum coming a nice free start off the edge outside the tight end running into an offensive tackle so now you've got a lot of momentum with a lot of a lot of mass coming at you at high speed that's tough for an offensive lineman to try and handle so it's not just about speed but the ability to win with power and also he's got a nice ability to drop his anchor in the run game and that's something that Dave talked about the the willingness to be able to improve the run defense for this Eagles defense I think now you've got a guy that again, can show the ability to set the edge. He did it at Penn State. Now he's going to have to do it at the NFL level. He can come in, work in slowly with guys like Derek Barnett, Brandon Graham, Chris Long, Vinnie Curry, Josh Sweat. Very good rotation there off the edge for the Eagles defense. Well, and we heard from new Eagles running back Miles Sanders earlier today. I'm sure he's very excited to have a guy who he's already friends yep. with, a guy who's already on his team at the next level. A lot of guys get to the next level, and they're like the new kid at school. They, don't, right. they don't have a lot of friends yet. They're getting to know everyone, so I'm sure these two will provide an immediate safe space for each other. That They will have to be super excited about that. So we see the Eagles addressing their defense on day three. Still one pick left for now, but we know Howie Roseman always wheeling and dealing. The phone lines are always open. We will be back in these seats every time the Eagles make a pick to break it down. An exclusive access that you will not get anywhere else on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. All of our social channels keep it right here with Eagles Draft Central presented by Dietz and Watson. We will see you later.